is Brian Van from Sport by Track here, sportbytrackier.com. Today we're going to do a quick video review for you on the Hornet DS helmet from Shoei. Let's give you a nice 360 here of the Hornet. With this, you're going to think like, wow, you know, like adventure, you know, touring kind of a helmet here. This can do a lot of different things. It can be used in three different configurations. As you see right here, it has the peak and the shield installed. You can remove the peak and run with just the shield. You can remove the shield and run with just the peak. So you can use this helmet three different ways, whichever one's going to best suit your intended application. Let's talk sizing for this helmet. I am a medium pretty much across the board in almost every common brand out there. This is a size medium. It fits fantastic. In the showy line, I am a medium completely across the board from the Dirt Helmet to the S11. And this was no different. Really like the fit of this helmet. Feels fantastic. Size medium on our digital shipping scale, 3.6 pounds. I think that's pretty reasonable considering everything that's going on. This helmet is both DOT and Snell certified. Okay? It comes with the uh, dry max liner from Shoei. The liner is totally removable, washable, and replaceable. The wicking material is definitely nice. And I think for an application like this, that's important. When you're out there, you know, doing your adventure touring, you're getting kind of warm, you're getting kind of sweaty, it moves the moisture away from your head, works keep you cool and comfortable. Let's show you the shield on this. This uses a shield that is unique only to the Hornet. One thing I will note with this is in order to get this shield to close properly, if you use just this tab here on the left side, you can't get the shield down tight against the seal all the way around, so you had to give it just a little push there. I don't really think that's a, a huge knock. I think that's something that just is a byproduct of the shape of the shield. Really no big deal. Just a minor quirk for sure. Ventilation. Up here in the chin bar, this vent can be opened and closed. This works to bring air into the helmet as well as direct some air up onto the shield to help remove fog and have a demisting effect. There are two vents that are up here that can be turned on and off underneath the visor peak. We'll show you that when we remove the peak. Here on top of the visor peak, you have a lever that actuates another vent. As we disassemble this, we can cover that better for you too. Rear exhaust vents here can be turned on and off, and there's actually a detent in the middle as well. It also has some ventilation here in the neck roll of the helmet. As it moves the air through the channeled EPS inside the helmet, it's able to escape here at the base of the neck. The helmet comes with a chin skirt, which can be removed and or replaced. Easy to do. I have it installed right now to remove it. Kind of give it a little tug here on each side. What happens here is this plastic ridge slides in between the helmet EPS, the chin, chin bar, and the helmet shell itself. It does that back here by the cheek pads and here up front by the EPS for the chin bar. You'll note here there's a couple little Velcro um, additions just to help hold it in place here in the back. It seemed to stay in just fine when I put it in place. You'll note that it's a pretty large chin skirt as well. Remember, once again, the applications for this helmet are pretty broad, so I think this is a nice addition for sure. To remove the visor peak, what you need to do is grab the cover for this vent here up in the front and give it a little tug like so. There's a, a locator pin right here in the back that you need to slide out just like that. It comes right off, no worries. This will give you a look at that vent mechanism right here. Okay. To get the visor peak off the rest of the way, you need a pretty high-tech tool like uh, this penny I have here in my hand. It's held on by three screws. One here in the back at the top. Loosen that one up, and you can remove it the rest of the way with your fingers. The two on the sides of the visor peak, I've noticed earlier, had a little bit of an interference fit. And I think that's to be sure that you don't lose them. So these you kind of need to thread out the majority of the way using our high-tech penny. 
and that's good because it's going to make it really hard for that to loosen up when you're out riding around. Okay, so you're not going to lose that screw. Repeat the process on the other side of the helmet. Like so. And off comes our peak. You can see there's quite a bit of flexibility built into this. Okay, so if you go down, there is a chance that it that it won't shatter. It is certainly not warranted as being shatterproof. Okay, but it does have a good amount of flexibility built into it, so hopefully that will help. You'll notice here for the intake of the top vent, there is this rubber seal so that all the air that's driven in through here gets caught here by this tab, forced down in through the hole, and there's a little seal to make sure it actually goes in the helmet. Showy's always been famous for cutting edge ventilation. Here are the two vents up in the brow area. To be open and closed, they are offering multiple detents on both sides. Okay. Now, if you're going to run this helmet without the visor peak installed, it comes with a little seal here that you quite simply push into place here, closing the top vent, right? I'm not going to put that in right now because I don't want to have to pull it back out. What you do need to do is you need to put this screw back in the top of the helmet. Okay, you just leave that rubber washer in place. Go ahead and grab the high-tech penny, give it a little snug like so. It comes with these little trim panels. Okay, they need to be installed here on the back portion of the shield over the ratchet mechanism like so. There's a hole in the center. We use the same screw that you took out with the penny previously. Just go ahead and kind of get them started and then thread them in using our penny. And remember, you can actually remove the shield and run this with the peak on it. So you could, you know, use a pair of goggles if you want to. Multiple applications can be serviced by this helmet. And here we go. The shield is replaceable. So if in fact, you know, you get it scratched up or you need one that offers a little bit of a tint, we can get that done for you, not a problem. Go ahead and snug that up. And there you go. You can run it with just the shield. Moving on to the interior now. Like I said before, completely re removable, washable, replaceable. Okay? This helmet also offers the cutouts for eyeglasses. It makes it easier to put the eyeglasses on when you have the helmet on. I think that's a good feature to add into a helmet like this. They've done that in the Multi-Tech and in the Hornet. To remove the cheek pads, we have one, two, three snaps. Grab the cheek pad here up at the front and kind of pull it out. This long plastic tab slides down into a channel here between the EPS and the helmet shell. Easy to remove. Repeat the process on the other side, simple mirror image, grab it at the front, give it a little tug, out it comes. To get our top pad out, we have two snaps in the back. And then in the front, you need to reach underneath the cloth and grab the top pad and just give it a light pull backwards. And you can see here the plastic that they sew the helmet liner to, plastic tab, real flexible. Here is our top pad, removable, washable, once again replaceable. Let's take a look at the EPS on the inside of the helmet, dual density EPS. You can see the channels here uh, for ventilation.